Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching videos of thermodynamics. In our last lectures, we have seen several types of relationships, very important Maxwell and non-Maxwell relationships and the equation of state. Then we have seen alpha, beta, gamma, thermodynamic coefficients and the relationship between them. Okay, now there are basic terms that you need to know about the thermodynamics and one of the very important term is heat capacity. So, in this lecture, we will see the basics of heat capacity. Okay, then we will see some of the advanced level relationship between the heat capacity. Okay, so let's start the lecture. First of all, understand what is heat capacity. Heat capacity of a system is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of the system by 1 degree centigrade. What is the meaning of this? Suppose we have a system, a beaker filled with water okay there is water in it and if we are providing it heat okay this is the amount of heat q that is provided to this water okay now as a result of this its temperature is increasing from t1 to t2 okay so we can say that heat capacity heat capacity is represented by c so heat capacity is actually q divided by t2 minus t1 if we divide this amount of heat that we are providing to the system by the difference of the temperature that we are getting, then we are getting the heat capacity and it is generally abbreviated as C. So, C is equal to Q upon T2 minus T1. Okay, actually it is a variation of the heat with the temperature. So, in more general terms, we can write C is equal to dQ by dt. Okay. And one very important thing that you should know that heat capacity is an extensive property. What is meaning of extensive and intensive property that I have cleared you in my first of the lecture. If you have not seen that lecture, you can go to the description box. You will find the link of my video number one of thermodynamics where I have given the details of all the terms. Okay. So extensive property actually means any property that depends upon the amount of the substance. This is called the extensive property. Okay. And intensive property means that is independent of the amount of the substance. So, heat capacity is actually extensive property. Why? Because it is depending upon the amount. Suppose we are taking the 100 gram of water and if we want to heat it. Okay. Then you know this will require much time. And if we are taking 1 gram water, then it will require a less amount of heat. Okay. So, as you can see normally that this amount of heat that we are providing to 100 gram of water will be quite different from the heat that we are providing to 1 gram of water. So, it is an extensive property. But if we divide this extensive property by the amount of the substance, then we will get an intensive property. So, actually there are two types of the heat capacity that are intensive. One is called the specific heat. Specific heat is actually shown by S. And what is it? Actually, it is the heat capacity for 1 gram of the substance. If the mass of a substance is 1 gram, then the heat provided to the system will be called the specific heat. Okay. And its unit will be equal to joule per Kelvin per kilogram. Okay. Similarly, there is one more term that is called molar heat capacity. Always remember one thing, whenever you are getting molar term in a property, whenever the molar term is added, then it always gives you the indication that it is an intensive property. Anywhere you are getting per gram, per mole, anything like this, then it is an intensive property. So, molar heat capacity is also an intensive property. It is denoted by Cm and actually it is the heat capacity of one mole of substance. It means the amount of heat required for raising the temperature of one mole of the substance is called the molar heat capacity. Okay. Now, yeah, its unit. Its unit will be joule per Kelvin per mole. Okay. So, this is about the heat capacity. Now, see here heat capacity when we are calculating the heat capacity it can be done in the two ways either we are doing it at the constant volume 
when the volume is kept constant okay in that case we will call it heat capacity at constant volume and we denote it by cv okay and sometimes it is done at constant pressure it means we are keeping the pressure constant then in that case it is denoted by cp it is called the molar heat capacity at constant pressure okay so see here when we are seeing the molar heat capacity at constant volume suppose volume is kept constant okay this is our system okay i am making a rough diagram see here if the this is our system okay and we are providing the heat to this okay but volume is kept constant it means this piston is now not moving okay means to say no volume change when there is no volume change del v is equal to 0 it means the work done will be equal to 0 w will be equal to 0 when dv is equal to 0 okay it means at constant volume okay so in that case all the heat that we are providing to the system will be used to raise the internal energy of the system it means we can say that this heat provided to the system is equal to the change in the internal energy okay if we are providing the heat then it will increase the internal energy right so we can write q is equal to del u okay so we can write cv is equal to del q upon del t at constant v okay or it can be written del u upon del t at constant v this is the definition of cv or heat capacity at constant volume now see what is the heat capacity at constant pressure at constant pressure means to say this is our system okay this is our system this is our piston okay so suppose we are providing it heat okay and the piston is moving it means it is going upward volume is increasing volume is increasing volume is increasing it means we can say there is expansion work it means we can say that w is equal to minus p del v w is in is utilized in the expansion work okay now if we are providing the heat to the system then this heat is not only increasing the internal energy of the system but it is also used to do the work okay so we can write q is equal to del u plus p delta v okay or we can write cp is equal to del u plus p del v upon t2 minus t1 okay this will be equal to del h upon t2 minus t1 at constant pressure okay in the differential form if we are writing it we can write cp is equal to del h upon del t at constant pressure so this is the definition of cp okay heat capacity at constant volume now see the one important thing that is the relationship between cp and cv see here if you are preparing for the csir level there are several relationship between cp and cv you can get cp minus cv in the several terms you can get it in the terms of alpha beta gamma you can get it in the terms of equation of state and in several other types okay but we are doing firstly the basic it means mayer's formula first of all we are starting from that because i know some of you don't know about the basics of the mathematics don't know about the basic things okay so we are starting from basic level and then we will see the advanced level relationship okay so do all the relationship with us see here cp and cv are different quantities we know in the case of cp we know when the heat capacity at constant volume we are seeing in this case we know work done is equal to zero no work is done why because the volume is constant okay so all the heat that we are providing to the system is used to increase the internal energy of the system okay it means if we want to raise the temperature this internal energy is actually what this is the term that is related to temperature if internal energy 
if the internal energy is increasing it means temperature is increasing right so if the whole heat is utilized to increase the internal energy it means less heat is required to raise the temperature but in the case of cp in this case we know work done is not equal to zero because the volume is increasing the gas is doing work okay so work done is not zero here we are doing the expansion work so this heat that we are providing is actually utilized in raising the internal energy and also in doing the work okay so means to say we need much more amount of heat if we want to raise the temperature okay so at the same time we will have to require a more amount of heat in the case of heat capacity at constant pressure so we can say that cp is always greater than cv okay this thing you should always remember okay now how much it is greater for this you will have to do this see here we know del q is equal to del u plus del w okay this is from the first law of thermodynamics i have not told you about the first law of thermodynamics we will see in the next lectures but for here you should remember that dq is equal to du plus dw okay or we can write it del u du du you can write du or del u anything plus pdv now suppose now suppose u is a function of temperature and volume okay in that case we can take du as the perfect differential we can write del u upon del t at constant v dt plus del u upon del v at constant t dv okay what you have to do just you have to do firstly differentiation with respect to one of the derivative keeping the other constant and then you have to do the differentiation with respect to other derivative keeping the first one constant in this manner okay now you know that del q is equal to del u upon del t at constant v dt plus p plus del u upon del v at constant t dv okay divide this on both side dt divided by dt at constant volume when the volume is constant it means we can say dv is equal to zero okay so we can write del q upon del t at constant volume will be equal to del u upon del t at constant volume okay by the definition we know this del q upon del t at constant volume is equal to cv so we can write cv is equal to del u upon del t at constant v that i have told you earlier okay if the same equation equation number 1 see here this is our equation number 1 if the same equation we divide by dt at constant pressure now we are putting the pressure constant okay so we can write what we can write del q upon del p at constant t is equal to cv plus p plus del u upon del v at constant temperature del v upon del t at constant p okay this term du cube upon dp at constant t is actually equal to cp so we can write cp minus cv is equal to p plus del u upon del v at constant temperature del v upon del t at constant pressure okay now from the ideal gas equation we know pv is equal to nrt okay we know this thing and we know that internal energy is a function of temperature only so we can write del u upon del v at constant temperature is equal to zero for the ideal gas del u upon del v at constant temperature will be equal to zero okay so we can write here cp minus cv 
will be equal to P del V upon del T at constant pressure. Okay. Now you need the value of this del V upon del T at constant P. You need this value. Okay. So for this what you will have to do? You will have to write the ideal gas equation. PV is equal to NRT. Okay. Right here V is equal to NRT upon P. Okay. Now we want del V upon del T at constant pressure. So del V upon del T at constant pressure will be equal to NR upon P. Okay. So put this value here. CP minus CV is equal to P NR upon P. It means we can write CP minus CV is equal to NR. This is the very basic level relationship between CP minus CV. Okay. It means we can say molar heat capacity at constant pressure and molar heat capacity at constant volume. Their difference is equal to NR. Okay is equal to R. Okay. When we are taking the molar capacities, then we will take here R. If we are not taking molar heat capacities, then we are putting here N. Always remember. Okay. So, this is known as the Mayer's formula. A very basic level formula that I am giving you here. In our next lecture, we will see some higher level of the formulas. How we can correlate them. Okay. I think you will like this video. If you are getting something from my videos if you are liking them please share these videos with the other students so that they can take the benefits of this video okay and if you are liking my videos please subscribe the channel okay please comment us and please like the videos thank you